Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're going to paint Watson. Now I know in the last couple of videos when I said, oh, we're going to do this, I was calling him Winston and I was, and I, when those went through edits and they get approved and I was like, I'm calling him Winston. Well, I knew a, a golden retriever named Winston, but his name is Watson. And I found him out on the internet. It was a free picture um, on Google. And um, so we can paint him and use him and you can turn around and sell your portrait. But more than anything else, you can, those of you that are looking for careers and stuff in painting, you know, hanging on to a few of these real, you know, nice paintings, especially today, we're going to do all of Prima. Um, and it, it, it's a very nice portrait technique and uh, you hang on to those and it allows you to make your portfolio of designs that you can uh, show potential customers and clients. So anyway, what I have here is uh, I'm going to do him up 16 by 20 here and I put, I'm put i putting it on a, a board. This is a uh, quarter inch sheet of lightweight uh, sandy ply, which I do like to use. You could use a... a um, a canvas. If you do use a canvas, make sure that you uh, fill in the, the uh, canvas weave or you use a portrait weave for it because we do have some nice hair detail that we want to get in there. And sometimes the weave, if you don't fill it up properly, uh, you know, with something like a gesso or uh, if you're using heritage, we have the canvas prep medium, um, which is, you know, higher quality than a gesso. But anyway, that weave will distort some of your strokes and you know all the prima all the prima originally came you know from 16th century and was Franz Hals who was a contemporary painter of Rembrandt but um, and Hals did you know he uh, had this um, uh, feeling of, of more stroke work of more quick uh, undefined or unblended areas of the painting and um, you know of course Rembrandt did lots of textures and everything and when I was over in the Netherlands and studying over um, in the Rijks Museum uh, and I got the chance to go look at a lot of halls and I've also studied halls in our National Gallery in Washington DC you know he was like Rembrandt used very thick paint and built up and did these and as it was described these rapier like strokes onto the canvas that had so much power well that became all the prima basically what it is there the Italian version of it into all the prima which is a Basically, there's a lot of tenets of all, all the prima, but a lot of artists use it different. So you'll find all kinds of artists using it different, and that's a good thing. That really is a good thing. Um, but it is to generally overall you try to finish it in one setting because tomorrow you're going to be a different artist. Uh, and it was generally done with oil, so it was done wet on wet. And of course, I'm going to paint acrylics. I'm going to paint pure acrylics. As a matter of fact, all the prima I paint all the time. Uh, I, you know, I can slow it way down where I finish the whole painting while it's wet with the acrylics with you with using extenders and a new medium that's uh, coming out called open medium. Um, but I don't I don't care for that because I'm a half tone painter. I love half tones. I'm a tone painter. And I believe if you shift your eye to a tone rather than a blend, you do a much better job on on the uh, capturing the image. Um, Anyway, like uh, kind of like I finished the uh, other one that you saw back there. It's been framed. It's getting ready to go up into the gallery. The wolf that you see back there, that is my uh, Father's Day gift to myself tomorrow. That's for my, uh, you know, they say, oh, tomorrow's Father's Day. You know, take Father's Day off. What are you going to do? I'm going to paint. <laughs> you know, that's kind of funny. You're a professional artist. You paint and you get a day off. Yeah, I'm going to paint. But I'm going to because I just enjoy what we do. But uh, that is a, fine, a fantastic technique. I'm going to work it kind of a modified all the prima and a premier coup technique together. Uh, and I'm going to use Anders Zorn's palette. Now, if you don't know Andrew Zorn, everyone who studies fine art and you go to the fine art schools and everything is, you know, uh, you, you, everyone paints the Zorn palette. The Zorn palette I've done, I've studied for several years, about 12 years now, and, and it is a limited palette. It's a black, a yellow, a red, and a white. And uh, it's fantastic. And so I'm going to paint the wolf with that, uh, that uh, timber uh, wolf with that uh, painting tomorrow. I'm kind of excited about it. All right, let's get into this. So what I did was uh, I prepped the board here with a medium white. Usually what I do is I find a, uh, some type of really warm undertone that is going to come into the dog somewhere. 
and then I'll prep, I'll prep the board or I'll do white and I'll glaze the canvas or the board or whatever you use, whatever surface you're using with that color. That just assists into your painting. I try to keep it on the light side. Uh, there's a lot of people that say for all the prime and everything, you should never paint on a, on a uh, pure white canvas. I totally disagree with that. There's a lot of other artists that disagree with that, but I don't argue. Everybody has their own techniques and how they approach it. And like I said, it's a great, that's a good thing. But um, this helps you see the colors and stuff. So when I go to put out my palette, I'm going to try to find everything here in Watson. And I may call him Winston a couple times today, so, but just let that go put that off to I'm getting older but uh, I put uh, my colors out on my glass this is my glass palette that I like to use here this is a 14 by 18 um, glass palette one quarter inch thick glass palette and um, I put my colors out onto it just straight acrylic what I do is I just you know squirt the colors right out here right uh, you know as I as I need them there and uh, I have out here for colors, I have a Hansa yellow, a Darulite yellow, yellow oxide. These work fantastic on the Golden Retriever. I used, on the last Retriever that you saw me paint, that I just did a thing, I also had out a Naphthol red light. But I didn't use it that much, so I eliminated it on this one. I'll probably, I might regret that and have to put it back on. But most of the darker tones that you see over here onto him that that naphtha red light would be assisting on uh, is into the cooler side of the of the dog right here on all the cool side we have the warm side and the cool side so you know I eliminated it and I'll be uh, moving my palette to two cool colors again like I like to use the quinacridone violet and the red violet so I put out Paranone Orange here, just a little bit of it. This is a high-performance mixing color that I don't really like it all by itself, but I love it whenever I'm painting it in conjunction with the cool color of Quinacridone and the warm color of Burnt Sienna. It just does amazing things. I have a nice warm green that will allow me to tone my colors. This will be our main toning color along with Cerulean Blue. Now normally onto a when I'm doing a portrait and stuff, I use a lot of Cerulean Blue. I don't put out the, uh, the uh, Thalo Blue that you see here, but we have a lot of real super dark, cool violet areas that we have to get. And cerulean blue just can't, even if you had some assist of the all three primers, it can't really get you down to that particular tone, that real violet. So a little thalo blue with the uh, red violet toned up with just a bit of the green is a magnificent way to do that. Now I may end up, well, one thing I did kind of forget about here is we have these grays out here. I'll try to make it with the, uh, because the uh, Paranone Orange can do it as well. But, uh, you know, I do use, when I make a lot of different grays, I do love Naphthol Red Light and the uh, Thalo Blue. So we might need to have some out there I'll grab it just in case here, and uh, we'll put that out just in case, okay? So, you ready? It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to try to uh, keep moving on this whole thing. We're just going to try to keep going, going, going. And uh, I'm going to work, whereas I did in the other portrait back there, worked at the whole solid uh, dark background. The Premier Coup is a, a, a little bit more of a formal style for the portrait, even though it's very, it can be very relaxed and artistic. The Alla Prima, I like to do real brush work and brush calligraphy on the outside, and a lot of you wanted to see me do some of that stuff, so we're going to do that. We're, we're going to go in and lay in our colors. Now, all kinds of ways artists start out with the Premier Coup, but we're going to keep mo moving with, I mean, excuse me, with the Alla Prima. With Premier Coup, I come in, establish the darks, and then work lighter. With Alla Prima, you can, I like to go with the, establish some of the darks, jump up to the lights, but I don't go all the way up to the lightest tone. I never put on the lightest tone ever. Usually, so if I'm perceiving something that has a nine, I'll drop two values down and put on a seven. That gives you more control over the overall look. And it, so you put on, so that basically what you do is you put on a range and you paint through to the middle. In Premier Coup, you put on the dark and then you slowly go lighter, lighter, lighter. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so, and I do love the a la prima. I love some of the formality of the Premier Coup. I love tones, but I do like um, a la prima also. All right, so first off, let's go in and let's establish we're going to have some darker tones and they're going to be cooler tones. We'll establish some of those. And I don't always go, you know, we do definitely have, the, you know, the nose, the lower lip, the eyes, the eye sockets as the real dark areas. But I'm going to work on his coat here first and establish that. I'm going to take burnt sienna. We've got to go over here, burnt sienna. So we've got to go darker. And Quinacridone is about the same value as that, and we want to cool, because this is on the cool side here. And I want to go darker, so I'm going to go with the red-violet. These are my two real cool colors that I'll work in here. Some of the lighter tone, some of the darker tone. And then this is going to be a little bit intense for that area, so that's where you have the green. So it's going to be a balance here. You can see the green will darken a little bit more, and it'll gray this tone quite a bit down and get us a lot closer to what that tone is going to appear over there. Now sometimes I like variation in the tone and so for the dog that variation I like it to come with some of my yellows and if I want this nice if I want to stay toned back over there I'm going to get this variation with my yellow oxide. So you can see those colors right in there. Do you see that? Now all we got to do is apply it. <laughs> so I'm going to start out this is my very old three quarter inch brush. Step way back on your hand on the handle here so you can um, keep very very uh, loose with it here with your brushwork you want your brushwork and your calligraphy to stay very very loose here so I'm going to try to get rid of some of the holidays but I'm which is the holes into the canvas but I'm not going to try to get rid of all of it I'm not going to work that hard on this particular layer now usually with all the prima when you're coming in here with all the primer, let me just get this out of the way. And you can see, so I have cameras. I have cameras there, I have cameras there, I have cameras there, and I have monitors all the way around here. So if you see me looking around at other things, that's what I'm doing. I'm checking it at different, so if I look at that monitor there, I'm looking at it like what you're seeing it at, which is about eight feet, right? When you're looking at me on this camera, you're looking at it, and that camera's about eight feet away over there on, the, on this side of the, of the studio. And um, then we have one that is slightly closer, which is right over there, which is what you're seeing right up here. That's shooting a close-up here. And what I like to do is see it at eight feet. So everything that hangs here in the galleries and stuff that we have, this now, our viewings are six to eight feet at a minimum. That's what I paint for. So we want to, uh, you know, establish that. With all a Prima, Usually what you do with all the prima is you establish the tone once. You try to establish and finish the tone once in one in movement and you don't really rework it. Now, there's a, all kinds of artists today that say rework it and I'm one of them. I'm one of them because I'm a tone painter. And uh, so, but it's a lot of fun to take a painting and just say, okay, I got one shot at each area. I'm going to make that tone, put it on and move and then get that painting done as quickly and, and efficiently as possible. That's some of the tenets. So, but everything is changing and I'm not, you know, I am, I'm a big advocate for change. So I'm not going to argue with that. I'm going to lighten this up just a bit. And you can see that with some yellow oxide can see I'm going to head right over to this side here. I might have to lighten it up just a bit more, but that will, yeah, and I will here. And I just don't want to get it. I want to get it lighter and it's going to go a little warmer. I could add a touch of white. When you add white, to it. Not only do you cloud the color, but you opaque it as well. So that's something to always remember. But you got to remember too, acrylics dry a little darker. It's a little give and take. So it all depends on what you're painting with and stuff. But that's a that's a gonna that's gonna dry down to a better tone in that area there. And we'll work just the bottom part of his ear and establish that plane there like that. And so we'll set that in there. Now you look at the relationship of this tone to that area and then let's take it, let's go grab some of the tones right in here on the lower side and down through to his neck here. So you can see this tone here, this tone is real close to what's going on in there. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that and let's come right at that point of his neck and let's just put a tone. And see I love using my old brush like this that doesn't give me a perfect stroke. And I don't want a perfect stroke. Um, 
And if you're painting the original tenet of all of Fremen, you could put texture in all of this because you're not supposed to go back. But, you know, it's, that's up to you. I'm going to lighten. Let's, let's go over and let's keep this cool. So see, as I'm going up with more of this yellow oxide and I want to keep it cool with this uh, nice quinacridone here, this color right in here, and I'll see that I might, I might have to put just a bit of that orange in there, but you can see we're getting that cooler tone right in there. That's what we're looking for. And let's just establish a little bit of that in this area here. You know, this is, uh, this is the one thing painting this way has really helped me, uh, you know, finding and seeing tones. I, I, uh, I find and see tones so much better. You know, I used to always uh, work my color so wet. Let's go back a little darker. Used to work my color so wet, and I required and I, and I relied a lot on blending. But now, as I'm a pure acrylic painter, working tones, I like to. Um, to make the tone itself and uh, you know I don't work the blender and it's helped my eye find tones faster. I'm going to go back to a little bit darker here and a little bit more grayed uh, and we might even add just a touch, a key word there is touch of the blue because it is very powerful in this mix and we'll outline a little bit of that. See how much darker that goes when you get that blue in there like that. We'll push that little bit and it's a my mark is a little big. Some of you that are watching me for the first time will realize I always like to overpaint something and then set it back into position. That is a violation of the original a la prima tenant. So but this is my painting. <laughs> and this is what we do. You know, the thing is, here's my philosophy on it. First, you got to have fun. Everything we do is fun, and this is a, a beautiful day outside today. This is a, a wonderful time to paint. I have the windows open. It's a wonderful time to paint. Everything's going great, and you gotta have you gotta have some fun, and you've got to be able to uh, instill creativity in everything you like to do, right? And if we run too many, I'm a guy that likes to follow rules, but if we run too many rules, we too many rules. St in, impedes or stops your creativity and you don't want to do that so I'm going to I'm going to lighten this up just a bit I've got this tone see I've got this tone right here so I'm going to it's going to be right between the two in other words of what we call a half tone between what we applied here and what we applied here is going to be this particular area and that's still just a little dark a little red so I'm going to go a little more yellow maybe a touch of white here and remember with the original ten of all prime you try to find that tone pretty quickly see that's a much better color picking up that one right over there um, the retrievers are kind of fun to paint here we'll grab some of that so I, I kind of like to block it in here and uh, I'll work light and dark and kind of block it in and then I'll go back and forth. Now see, this is already starting to dry up here because it's a hot day. It's 87 degrees outside and I have the windows open of all things. But uh, I have a little fan going there, I'm fine. Um, and so if I want this to move again because it's getting really stiff, I just add a little water to it. And that'll move, that tone will move for me here. And uh, I'll be able to just set that area in as I kind of see there like that okay so anytime that I want to soften between two tones even if I wanted to soften this area with that dark um, you know for the couple of hours of the painting that we're gonna do here I just put a little water into it and I can soften that because the heritage stays wet I mean will stay where you can reconstitute it there for a little while like that so we'll just work that there for a second and let's get a little bit more of that darker right in here by the edge, the edge of his ear. I like some of that in that, that brushwork there in his ear. And I just might leave that out there because that's this good calligraphy there. So we got that. Now let's just take both of these kind of together here. And I'll gray down a little bit more. 
and cool just a bit more. And let's just knock out some nice brushwork here. Some nice brush calligraphy for his lower section here. We'll just let that... Now that takes a lot of confidence to do that and that took me... You know, that took me so long to be able to do that and part of it was because I was such a blender for so many years and then I could never get the you know, that, that real casual look to my flowers, to the, anything that I painted. And um, I was able to do that as I became more of a tone painter. So I was able to really uh, kind of get to everything a little more casual. Let's put a few marks of this tone back over there because there are some areas we'll pick that up. And uh, we'll have to reset this tone again in just a little bit. But let's just grab some, let's warm this up. See, this is what I love about all the Prima. I want to go work this area over here. I'm going to go work it. I work what it is I want to do. I'm taking some yellow oxide, some white right into here. And see, I'm heading right into that mid-tone. Not the lightest tone but that kind of outside, that kind of middle tone right there. It gets more yellow, orange right up here, but right down in there. And I'm looking at that area right there that I just might just drop this on real quick and kind of capture some of that, some of the calligraphy here out. We'll just capture a bit of that out there like that real quick. And... Um, Kind of set. Now, we've got to put the warm tone. As a matter of fact, we can just go ahead and do that. We're all a prima, so let's just take a little yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. We'll make this other tone that's right up in there. We'll have to have a couple of the tones. I'm going to add just a touch of water here. And uh, see, that's real close to what that is over there. And uh, so I'll move that. So a lot of times in all a prima, what I do is... Uh, you know, I, I changed the, the tone on my palette, watching my palette changing the tone. In Premier Coup, I'm more, I, I'm very more scientific, let's put it that way, about the actual painting. And uh, this is a, quite a bit more relaxed here to it. And I like it. I love both. I, I'm a, you know, chemist colorist. I love, I love mixing the colors on the palette and looking at them. Let's just pull out a bit. Let some of these tones just kind of cross into each other there. And I probably could go up just a bit here. Sorry about that. And um, yeah, and I'm going to take some white with some of this tone. And we're just going to scrub out here like this down to the edge. And let some of that, that's the good old Ala Prima edge there that I like. And I'll, I'll be able to manipulate it quite a bit more when we... Uh, when we put in what we might want to do on the background. Let's take some of that light tone that's right there. And let's just for right now, I love this movement on him. So I read, what you do is you read the movement of their fur and that's what you're trying to catch is that movement here. And you try to do it efficiently. And you know, we may end up restating this if you don't paint it quite a bit, you may end up restating it a lot. I mean, Premier Cook, or, or excuse me, Ala Prima, you may end up restating it a lot, but that's part of the process. That's part of the learning that we do. So I'm gonna catch some of that. I'm gonna catch some of that going right up into there. And sometimes I use my finger to push a little bit, just a little bit of that mark. We're gonna try to capture that a little better later. But this just tells me I've got to get in there. Capture a little bit of that light here. It's kind of nice to see some of these tones. Let's, uh, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not taking my light up to the final. So this uh, is a, a uh, you know, a nice good look at it for, for us. But, you know, before I take anything up to the final and to the lights and we start making all the fur and all that kind of stuff, we really need to, um, really need to get some of our background and stuff going through. All right, let's jump up to the warm. Let's go up there and let's get that a little brighter. So some Darulite in it this time. Maybe a little yellow oxide and Darulite. And you'll see that takes us right, let me put a little bit better onto the, 
that takes us right up over there to that nice really warm tone now it'll dry down just a bit so let's add just a touch of, of nice light to it here and uh, let's just jump right in and grab some of that right in there that's pretty darn good for that tone over there and maybe a bit of that right out here there so and that'll dry down just a touch so that'll be good let's add just a touch more burnt sienna to it and come right down in here right in there that's pretty good of course I'll switch over to a smaller brush and be able to do quite a bit more calligraphy here in just a little while let's gray this darken gray this just a bit just a bit grayer just a tip right out there and that's a little bit big there Dave and let's get a little lighter right in between these two a little more gray here just a little lighter and grayer capture that ear just a bit there right in there okay and uh, let's just do I usually what I do is you know and what a lot of artists tell you to do is look at the big and then focus down to the small that's one reason why I'm painting with a three-quarter right now I'm trying I'm not you know there's a bunch of real small little tones in there and uh, I'm not applying those right now um, you could if you're a pure all a prima painter yeah you could but uh, I like to kind of play through that a bit but the, uh, you could add a few little ones in there like that where you see a bit of those, you know, coming in and, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I have this nice tone here. I'm just going to slide over here and cool it. Let's try this. Just cool it. It's a little cooler than what he is right there, but I think that it'll work as a nice undertone that we can turn around and, uh, and manipulate a little later here. So let's pull that down here on the side of his face and pull some of that. Follow the calligraphy. He's got beautiful long fur so you can see what the brush calligraphy, what the, what the actual brush mark needs to be on that. So you can do that. Now, so that's a brighter tone right in there. This one right here is just a little bit darker and just a little bit grayer here. We'll take some of that and then we'll add it right into that one right there. To darken and gray just a bit and let's start it's going to start right here really make the plane on the side of his face there and I may have pulled that down a little too far but uh, that works it'll work and let's just take I'm a big advocate of moving tone so some of that let's just move down through there that works and uh, maybe a bit of it catching up through there catch some of that other kind of movement in him there and uh, let's just drop some of that in for that edge there a bit and that's that one is a little bit more yellow a little bit warmer but this will be okay for right now I'll address that again if I was a pure tenant of all the Prima follower I would, wouldn't I'd address it now but I like to approach it this way so and uh, now <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making the painting a little easier for myself as I narrow down my eye as I'm going to go in there and work his eyes and do all that kind of stuff I'm going to narrow down where I'm looking instead of looking at the overall I'm going to start looking down now at some fine uh, smaller ones. So I'm going to go from my three quarter inch brush down to eight. You can go to an eight or a ten fusion uh, filbert like this. This is an old one, doesn't even have a chisel anymore. That's why I like it. And um, we're going to find some of the nice gray cool tones here and on the uh, on his nose. So burnt sienna green is the graying color and a little red violet. Now we could add the tiniest touch of blue up here if we need. That cerulean is one of the best to do it be, if you're not super dark because the cerulean is not as powerful. And look at the beautiful gray tones. That See that underlying tone there by his nose up here in the front? 
it's an it's a nice tone and that might be just a touch dark so we could add a bit of yellow and a bit more burnt sienna to it and yeah that's it right there it's an underlying tone under some of his fur and then I'll just bring that back into that one again and right up by the top and we'll just whisper a bit of that coming up and across a little bit right through there into his nose some of that's gonna be all painted out but you see all that little whisper of it in there let's just get it in there and look at that nice warm little hit of it right there um, yeah that's gonna be kind of the, some of the fun stuff that we'll do now look at where else that tone is there's a little bit of it right up there and right up by that mark let's push in and that'll some of that will paint out let's let's whisper just a bit of that now that's dry on dry really dry I did, I love granulation but maybe not quite like that so I'll just add water to this and sometimes I'll just rinse my brush and just run water over it a couple of times to work those two tones together like that a little softer so I can you know concentrate on the the movement of the brush a little better so just take water into your brush and just move it off so if I wanted to soften the edge of this which is not really a great thing to do to leave an edge of a tone like that uh, I just and this is already dry see I just take a little water and run the edge like this and uh, loosen and you know loosen that edge up a bit that's a better way to leave the edge on a painting like that so that it doesn't but you see uh, this is going to happen for a couple hours you can work the edges like that so then this is a, a nice thing to be able to do that you can come back and work the edge a little bit put on everything and then go back and work your edges a bit let's grab this side of the face let's differentiate the ear from this side of the face we want a light warm kind of an orange we might even add the tiniest bit of our paranormal this time into there look at how that just warms that tone let's get our yellows their diolides and the light and we'll grab this lighter now it is up there it is up there, probably an 8 to a 9 almost, probably a good solid 8. So, you know, we're we're right about there, right about into that area there. And uh, so let's just grab this and pull back just a bit here. And we'll pull that tone back down. We're going to let those probably, you know, I definitely, I'll, I'll show you. This is the light tone, that's the dark tone there. And so I'll soften it. How do you bring those tones together? Well, very easily. First, you know, I mean, first you can do it with water. You could take some water like this and run the edge. And that just takes those two and pushes them right together like that. That's one way. The other way, and as, a, uh, as an artist, I do both because I like variation in, even in, my, in my, my painting here. I'll run a half tone. So I'll take, here was my dark, here is my light. I'll come somewhere between the two of them with a half tone and I'll run that half tone in there like that. Sometimes touch it in the in the direction of his fur and that softens those tones together and gives me the opportunity to come up here and restate maybe that light pulling down. And now I have a softer transition through the uh, through the painting here following some of his calligraphy so there's a bunch of different ways you can do it here and I'm trying I'm gonna try to show you a few of them in this painting but I can't show you all of them but I'll show a few of them let's go grab this tone slightly darker let's go up we want to make sure we really capture the sockets of the eyes into the into the retrievers like this they have these amazing eyes and well, all basically in a lot of your portraiture, that's what you want to try to capture is those eyes. So we're putting that part of the socket in here, there. And uh, I might take just a bit of water and just pull down here and extend that just a bit there, some of that movement. Now that'll soften out. We can soften that out with a half tone, but I'll put some of that in. Matter of fact, let's go in there a little lighter Take this a little lighter, up to about a value nine this time. Let's not to the pure, not to the final light. Look to a, a undertone here, not to that final light. You look, 
you know, we, we want a tone that's right in there. I don't want that super light one. I want one right below it just a bit. That's where I want to grab this. And I want to see it right up there like that and pull in right up towards the corner of that eye there. And I need to finish off a slightly darker down over here to, to round his head just a bit there. And I need that shadow tone. I didn't finish off his ear there. How come you guys didn't tell me that? I need to finish off his ear here. A little darker. Burnt sienna, a little yellow. Just a touch of green because it's a receding plane back there. Touch of green will help it gray and recede just a bit. Let's just grab that. That's going to be just a touch dark. So we'll go a touch lighter. Here right in there like that. That's good. That'll allow me to build that side of his face back up again. As a matter of fact, so you don't lose, you know, I always follow Sargent, even if I'm not using his exact painting technique this time. Always preserve your drawing because you don't want it to come off. And, and so when you know you just violated a line, you want to go back and make sure you preserve your drawing so that you know, you don't take, because after a while, you'll forget about that and you'll, you know, you'll come off. So we want to preserve our drawing here of this. And, and uh, here towards the end of the video and stuff, we'll uh, show you a little bit more about, you know, drawing. I'm a I'm a big advocate of drawing, learning to draw, but you can do portraits and stuff like this without having the uh, ability to draw. And I'll show you some of the some of the ways to do that. But we'll put a bit more of this light right back up here on this edge. I want to get this plane a little bit more rounded right there and pull in. That'll be better. That'll capture some of that around his eye. I mean, around the side of his head and round that up. So that'll be good. Let's get some of this nice medium tone in here. So that's going to be burnt sienna, yellow. It's starting to cool, so a little bit of our quinacridone, because we're in the middle tones. In the middle tones, I grab the quinacridone. We'll lighten, and then we need to gray slightly. We need to gray slightly. Let's see where we are on that. So don't look at the light here. Look at what's underneath there. It could be just a touch more mottled with some yellow, maybe a bit of green and some light here. Here, hit, I hit that violet there. That's kind of a pretty tone right in there. See that? That right in there. And let's grab some of that right down in here. And just kind of sketchy. This is sometimes when I uh, when I'm putting this on, I like to use more of the chisel of the brush and slide it just a bit because you'll start to get some of the fur look to the to the dog. And come back over here. So I've got a cool side and a warm side on my palette, and I want to get more yellow. We'll grab both of our brighter yellows. We'll cool that just a bit here, and we're going for that tone on that part of his head. Let's try that. So it's that tone right in there. And uh, see where that goes. Try to, uh, we'll need a, a little bit more gray and stuff onto the back side there. Let's just cool and gray that just a touch more. Boy, that was too much there, Dave. Get a little burnt sienna in that. And pull some of that down through there. And I like that olive prima edge. That edge. I like to take that color out without destroying the drawing too much. I like to take that color out there. And uh, so towards the end of the video here at the end, I'll show you basically how you can uh, do the drawing and stuff real, really quickly, really easy. On my online courses, I show it all the time, but we'll we'll do that. So now I'm going to, so I got that area in and everything I want to get into here, which means I got to go light, but I don't want to put it in as light as it is there because I don't want to see that much light into the painting yet. I always want to leave myself some room to grow, to get it, but I do want to make sure it's lighter than my other tones that I'm applying here. And let's just come down and push a little bit of that. That could be a bit warmer yellow. 
bit warmer yellow on him here. So those of you that are painting this will have some of the, the photos, reference photos and stuff that I use over on our websites and stuff. And all the links are up in the uh, description. So you always go up and check the description of each of the videos. We always put the links of everything that I'm doing right up into the descriptions there. So, so we'll grab a bit of that. And uh, that, that works. We need to restate that... Uh, other tone here right up in there just a bit get that a little closer so you think I'm so you know looks like I know what I'm doing there so we'll get that just a bit as my eye focuses down we start to put in some of these other little tones it'll start to the image will slowly become more and more and more like him so that takes just a bit. I don't I don't try to capture it right away. That takes just a bit to get there. So you can look like right back up in this area here. We need to take, matter of fact, we can take some of these together here. I'll put a little water here so it thins just a bit. And we can grab some of that nice warm tone. Just drag that over. That'll take this area just a little closer to what he is there. And, I, and this is how I like to paint. So with the pure tinted at all, the prima, you don't go back into something like this. Um, but, uh, you know, with the uh, David prima, or how I like to do it with acrylics, I go back. <laughs> you know, I like, I like to go back and uh, set those things up. But everybody's a little different, you know. We all do different things. Now... Let's set that, let's get that left side of it, or his right side, we're seeing him on the left here. Let's gray that up just a bit. A little green right into our siennas here. Okay, and uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna use several grays. This is a beautiful warm gray from like greens and siennas. And it's a tone that mostly will disappear uh, here towards the end of the painting, but it's a beautiful warm tone. And I like it underneath. I'm going to go up to almost a 9 here, a little lighter. Maybe even a little lighter yet, because this will dry down. And when you get up above value 8, you'll be surprised at how far down some of these things dry. So I'm up here about a 9, getting it very light. You'll be surprised at sometimes just how these tones dry down, how much they dry down. So we'll grab some of that light that's right there beautiful little undertone. Let's grab this side of his face and put just a bit of that there as well. Okay, now what does that do? Boy, that leaves us an area we better get some half tones in for sure. Let's just put a little bit of that right there to soften some of that area there. So you could do it with water, but we have this lovely little half tone that we could do uh, as well right in there. Half tone is halfway between the two, so any kind of burnt sienna, yellow, a little bit of green, see that's a beautiful tone right in there. We'll start to capture a little bit of that and sometimes I'll blur the edge with my finger, sometimes I'll take some, uh, you know, clean the brush, just not completely, just rinse it out a bit and just pull through with a bit of water like that. Grab that. It's not blending it and I'm, because I, I wipe my brush each time, so I'm not carrying any color. I'm just blurring the edge. I don't call it, I call it blurring. I blur the edge. So I don't like to blend, I blur. Let's push that in, a little bit of that color in there. That's kind of nice. I like the, a bit of that coming right up here by his eye. So I'm going to push a bit of that in there, right up there. And I just, that... That will make a little bit nice tone right in there too, that what we just put as a half tone there. Just a touch of that working through some of that. But see, when you come through a second and a third time, you start to get more movement of the tones and that's when it gets really nice. Let's put some of that tone right down in there a bit more, right in there. And let's go over and grab that brighter little spot. Not too much brighter, but we'll grab some of that, a touch of orange, some of your brighter yellows here. Let's just grab that right in there. 
that's just kind of a pretty little spot and it's kind of nice to spot him up sometimes with a few of those little fun tones here that uh, will grab him just a bit there I like those there's a nice maybe just a half tone darker here just a bit that's a little too dark let's go back up towards that put that little spot right in there now we'll go more burnt sienna maybe just a touch of that violet as you come over here onto the cool side find that violet push that violet in there okay find that violet and let's gray that just a bit because we're really heading into the grays here maybe a touch lighter so I like to work multiple tones like this into these areas and let them override that's where I think you get a lot more interest into the the dog itself here let's take some of this light you see just a bit of that coming right out through here just kind of dabbing around here following kind of some of the calligraphy you see of the fur here where's gonna go this is why I love the old brushes pushing it in with the old brushes and this is pure fun <laughs> this is just a lot you know you've got to don't ever think oh my painting I'm destroyed my painting or this is horrible it's just paint in a board and have some fun with it and if you have some fun and stay lighthearted and go well that's the wrong tone but I'll fix it and you, and you can as you and here's the thing and here's the thing that a lot of us matter of fact I was watching this other video this other artist and he said <clears throat> and matter of fact I shared it on my Facebook page and I said, shared it over in my classrooms I said you guys got to go watch this guy because he's excuse me he's very correct and then he says <clears throat> once you get everything blocked in and all these colors around then you're able to see some of these tones other tones a lot better and that's true because you block it all in and then you can start fussing it and finiting it just a little bit more and if you're new to tone painting like that that you know doing a couple dozen paintings like that is going to give you it's going to start training your eye to be more uh, you know discerning on a tone and you're going to have an easier time with it uh, and finding it and a better and a faster time at finding the tones so you know it's a process with what I want to say but as you fill in as I'm filling in here, then my eye is going to see all these areas that are close, and I just need to refine them just a bit more, and I will. I can do that because that's my job. I can refine that tone. I am dropping this down. It needs to be a little cooler. I want just a little, little darker, a little cooler right in here for that side right there. It's a little, it's this jawline right there. That's and as his head is turned, and I want to push that tone right in there. Now, see, I'll fur him all up. I'll do all these amazing, amazing fur strokes later. Not now. Once I get the once I get my tonal map in, then I can come through. I know the tones. Then I can come through, and uh, you know, I can put more more into him. Let's get back to that light. You know, that light is really close. If I add just some. Uh, of that coolness right there to that and that light over here is pretty darn close especially into the as a as a base for this there right in there like that pretty close to where I want to go it's not the lightest but it's pretty close uh, let's get some burnt let's just grab some burnt sienna and some violet we'll take that right up here slightly darker maybe a bit of yellow in there but it's cooler see still leave it cooler let's put a little half tone in there right now just to soften that exchange for those of you that like to blend and stuff a little bit we can do that and let's grab that darker tone I forgot to put that one in or actually I was saving it for this part of the painting here let's put a little darker yeah grab that burnt sienna red violet and green because now we're heading into a darker area right let's grab that it's coming off the corner of his eye and down and it's going to lift this part of his ear up here as well it's going to come all the way up there and lift that part of his ear like that and uh, let's pull that tone 
right there. We'll drop down by the socket of his eye and put some of that right there. Now I might want to take some of this, either cool or slightly lighter, and just run them. Don't blend them, just run a couple strokes through each other, just across each other. Don't blend. And uh, because then it just makes one tone. That is what I call is just running them together. I actually use a term in my classrooms called incorporating them. I incorporate the terms. I visually incorporate them. I always uh, liken it to marbleizing, like the marble of a tabletop or something. So you kind of marbleize them together, but you don't get rid of the individual tones. They just kind of swirl together just a little bit, and that creates the fur, and it also uh, creates... Um, the, the tones crossing creates a little bit of visual, what we call optical blending. I'm going to put just a touch of light in there. That comes down just a bit more. And cross. And it's very important, you know, that your drawing or your photo, your reference photo, since we're not working from a live dog here, we, uh, that they are, you know, the same height. So you can just really look right across r easily here and see. There'll be a, about halfway at this curves, about halfway up that mark will come in here. See, my eye starts to get a little bit smaller now, just a little bit. Let's just push that little tone right in there and get that a little closer to the side of his face there, just a bit more. So I start to see... Uh, after I get a majority of him blocked in, which he is, I start to see a bit more tones. Now, as we swing around this way, we got a lighter, little warmer one right up there, a little bit more yellows into that. Let's get a little yellows, a little light here, just slightly, just slightly cool. We'll drop that in, right in there. Okay, and let's just, now you can take just a little bit of your burnt sienna over here with some of your greens and just put a little half tone, just boom, see? Real quick, see how that blurs the edges of those other two tones? And just that one little mark that I put in there starts to take you to what that is. As you start to, you know, fuss down and get smaller, like I could take a burnt sienna right here with just a touch of that orange and a touch of this yellow and find that other little little tone right in there and fuss one right together there too and get that even closer to that area, see? So that's what's, that's what's so fun. That's when I really like it. Like, I'll take some of that slightly more to the yellow side here. Let me just fuss this tone just a bit. Right out there. There like that, see? And that gets that even a little closer. And some of that can just go right up here, too, just a bit, just some small marks of it. And let's go back and increase the light just a bit right here. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I usually don't do this until I have more of him laid in, but uh, that'll get us there. And it'll get a little bit better here. Let's get his nose and then we want to go work on, before we get too far, we want to work on his eyes and stuff here so that uh, he starts to look at us. Let's get that nice violet, lower lip, violet, some green, some burnt sienna. This is nice gray, dark, slightly more blue. Slightly more blue and cooler. I'm going to use the corner of the brush. I'm just going to set that in it kind of comes up right up there towards his mouth line there. So I'm going to drop that just a bit lower and let it run into that upper lip there. You can get really finite now if you want. You know, we do. I usually do some of this later, quite a bit later, but there's a little light spot. There's the catch light that's hitting right there. And so we can just drop a bit of that light in there right now just to say we did it. We haven't put the, the, the catch in it, so we could probably just do that just a bit more so we know that. But that's a little, I usually don't do that this soon in the painting, but let's take some of this lighter gray. See, it's a real violety gray, and that's a tone that I'm seeing right in there. Let's drop that down right in here, and I like to scumble this. Scumbling is letting the, the color stay dry, 
and it's you know sometimes it's hard to apply, but that's what you want. Let it stay dry so it it doesn't make a perfect stroke, downstroke. Let's push some of that right in there, right in there like that. Okay, so we'll grab some of that. Let's uh, make that a bit lighter, maybe even a bit warmer over into this one. This will be a half tone right in between those right there and soften that edge right there just a touch. Right on the edge of that lip is actually a bit lighter right on the edge there, the bottom side. Boom, there. Let's pull down right here. Pull down and out like that. I like just a bit of that movement there. Here. And uh, yeah, that works. Now, let's just, you could take extender or water. I don't, I use extender sometimes just to make the color move. I don't use it to blend. I'm not a blender. It, it's going to slow down the drying time and that's okay because I'm going to be leaving this area here in a minute. I'm going to take some of my warm tones that I had up there, some of my gray tones, and that's going to help me right in here with the side. That could be a little bit more gray right in there. Probably just a bit more. Right in there. That's better. And just kind of scumble stroke that off a bit. That's the whole side. Let's model that right up here with some of these and the grays and this. Modeling on your brush means multiple colors going on without blending them on your palette too much. So they're going to come off in different strokes and usually like around their muzzle and stuff like that I'm starting to put in a lot of tones and so I like to do that. Now ever so much of a hint of the the upper lip, the lower part of the upper lip here. So I'm going to push that on, which will help us define that. But we've got to uh, we've got to immediately take some of our lights, our nice modeled lights here, and pull down through to that, eliminating most of it, leaving just a little bit to preserve our drawing. There, we can see. Okay. And, uh, you know, you get those tones on. This is the whole thing. You get those tones on, and you can see right away that, you know, that I could really state a nice, light, much lighter tone. Let's see, this is all dry here, right? Pretty much, not completely, but I'll just add some water right to it here and lighten up that tone. And with the alapramia that I do here, I like to, you know, build the tones, get the tones correct. Then I'm going to come back with thick paint and make the, the actual fur strokes later on here. But uh, I'll pull those down. We'll just grab some more of that movement there. See, doing these movement strokes multiple times really gets you close and really gives a nice look to your, to your dog, to your animal that you're painting here. That's how I like to approach it. So I'm, when you look at that tone, I'm right up in there. I'm not there. I'm not that light. I'm right up in there, see? And this will dry down a bit, so maybe not quite that far, but I'm getting closer there. There, like that. And if you want, you can just, you don't, you don't have to make the same. As a matter of fact, it's prettiest if you don't make the same exact same tone that you had before. Work another one close and just work those, incorporate those together like that. And you, you're grabbing that area just a little bit more, a little bit closer here and let's just pull down just a bit a little lighter and we'll grab that there we go so we're getting it just a little closer that nice light tone here can pull right down there by the lower lip pull down a bit and just grab that up touch there. We'll put the fur in and get it. I'm looking for getting his tones in right now. And we have to get all lighter right down here, but we're getting in a pretty good shape. Now as this dries down, you can see he can come lighter all the way around. Some of this nice light warmth can come back up and through here again. And this is the way I like to do it. I, I mean, I love to work this. And pure olive prima, you wouldn't. You know, you try to get closer with the tones. Well, I am one that 
you know, you have this in color theory, and, you know, if you haven't studied color theory, you should. There's a rule in there called simultaneous contrast, and it's just like what that other artist said, is you get all these tones on, they're going to affect everything else in your painting. And so, you know, you're going to come off, and that's okay. You're going to come off with the tone, you're going to get in there and go, oh, wow, that dried a lot darker than I thought, and, you know, and the second that I push in some of these other colors here, that's really going to change a lot of them here. So, um, you know, I mean, we have to uh, make some of those adjustments. You know you're going to make those adjustments. We're going to have to make some of those adjustments. And uh, so all the Prima is really fun. There, but some of the uh, people that say, well, you don't make adjustments. Well, this is your all the Prima. We make adjustments to the tones. So I'm just going to... Just lighten that just a bit there. I do like having a bit of that other. So see, my eye starts working smaller into smaller movements of the tone. And uh, I'm going to want to start painting with some textures. Not yet, but pretty soon. To pull some of these uh, strokes down and start to get some more of the, the movement of his fur and stuff. After I get these, uh, you know, these looks to the... That I want. That's a, a bit too much movement up there. I've got to get his eyes in. I've delayed that. I'm not usually this late in getting eyes in, but I want to put a bit more of this warmth right up here because the eyes are going to make everything change quite a bit. So I want to get just a bit more of that. Let's push in just a bit of that right in there. And I like leaving some of those marks. You know, I mean, we, we might leave a bit more. It all depends, you know, and, and it's like I said with the other retriever, okay? The other retriever here and, and what your calligraphy, just like the difference between Franz Halls and Rembrandt, who were both contemporary painters at the time, and, um, you know, they were they approached it completely different and how they did it, and, you know, their, their clients, their... Um, their customers and stuff, you know, each had their own likes and dislikes about it and everything. You will find your own. Your calligraphy and how you leave your lights and your darks and, um, you know, how you play your brush on the surface and whether or not you use a palette knife, that's all part of what's going to become you as the artist. And, of course, some of you are already there, but, they, you know, that's just all part of your technique for you as the artist. This could be a, a, a good tone lighter before I go into the eyes and nose there, just to help me see that just a bit more there. That's a little cooler, too cool a gray, but that is uh, just going to help him pop forward there just a bit. And look, see, that's the whole thing. When you paint tones like this, they dry down. And so it's this is why, especially if you're in acrylics, you do end up having to work them a couple times because sometimes then the under tone of what you're painting dries down a lot more than you think. I've got this little bit of dark I want to put in there into his nose. It's got to be a little lighter than his lower lip here. A bit of pouncing light through it, scumbled through. We'll break that up a bit. Make that look kind of nice. That's good. Let's go ahead before we do the eyes and set that nose to the thalo, burnt sienna, some of this orange that will the orange we're going to use instead of the the uh, naphtha red light and look at it, it makes a beautiful gray see these beautiful grays that's the gray that's in him and we can warm that over here make this beautiful gray over here slightly warmer too as we go over to the warmer side but let's just drop that in that's a good mid plane receding plane gray right there and uh a bit of that up here on the top of his nose. Let's um, get some more sienna in it. Slightly lighter, just a, just a touch. And some sienna in it, because it's going to dry down too. And put that soft, that it helps this nose incorporate into his fur. You want to watch, when you're painting the nose, you want to watch your tones really closely here, because, and you want to, uh, you definitely want to at all times maybe blur the edge a bit, but um, incorporate some of the tones.
that you're using in the body, which of course is the burnt sienna here. Because if you don't, you're going to make the nose look like it's stuck on, like it's just glued on there. So you want to make sure you're incorporating tones. I'm going to take a little bit of those two colors, put them together into the light here, and just scumble on that side. Pull out just a bit there, like that. It helps that plane, that side of the nose. Let's get this uh, slightly warmer, so back up to this side, slightly lighter. Not that blue, Dave. My brush hit that blue, darn it. And get a little bit of that more. There, that's a good, watch that blue in there, brush. Boy, I tell you, that thalo is so powerful. But this tone right here will look for the light side of his nose, the light warm side of his nose. And uh, that could be a bit lighter, just a touch. And you don't want to go too light because it, you need that undertone to keep it from getting chalky looking. And uh, let's come right down to there. Now, that's a good light strike of it, but I need a I need a additional soft. So there's where I am. I need a little bit darker. So let's just go a half tone, which the half tone would be a tone right between this one and that one right there. And we'll push that in right on that edge to soften. See, I just take two strokes and I soften that nose, you see? And uh, that's what I want to do here. We'll just drop that in. Just a corner of your brush, a little bink like that, and it starts to take that little edge away, see? So I don't blend. I just take, I want some of the power of that, of that stroke, that movement there. Let's take this lighter bit. Let's push to the lower part of his nostril there. There's a hit right here on the upper part of his nostril there. See that little hit right there? Little light struck plane right there. So let's just go ahead and bring that out. And then let's go back to our darker tone. Now if this starts to dry up and it's getting really sticky here, it's very hot here <laughs> today. I opened up the windows and maybe not such a great thing right now. Um, but uh, Let's put darken it down, cool it down just a bit, get that lower nose, lower part of his nose. We've got to get that nice dark nostril in there. Sometimes, you know, when I'm painting the, the noses and stuff, I'll simplify the structures a little bit so that they, you don't want to go in there and render all the structures perfect on the nose. And, and that softens them just a bit and uh, makes them more friendly. There's a nice dark tone right there. You might want to just blur that edge. Blur that edge right there like that so that stays a little bit softer. His edge is pretty defined, but we can stay a little softer here. And that makes him a little more friendly in the end. Here, let's put just a touch of that pulling up. Okay, nice. I'm just going to use the, I'm going to paint the nostril here with some of this dark, and I'm just going to use the corner of the brush and you know, in actuality, they're perfectly formed little nostrils and stuff, and I don't like to do that. You know, they're like little comma strokes, what we call comma strokes, and I don't like to do that as much. I like to, um, I like to keep them not quite as perfect as what you see in the dog, and that makes it a little better. I'm just going to warm up just a touch. We'll work this nose again a couple more times here. Here we go, just like that. Work that. There. So you see those nice warmer tones. It could get a little bit lighter. I'm going to add just a touch of extender right in here to keep this wet for a few minutes. You can see how. Now, if it dries, extender won't reconstitute the paint. See all this is dry over here? This is dry. And I can put extender on it here, and it won't bring up the paint because the paint is dry. Extender only slows down the drying time when the paint is wet. When it's dry like that, you need water, the solvent, to bring up the paint. See how the solvent brings up the paint here? And it, with a little extender in it, will let this, and I'm slowly bringing the paint up here with the solvent. And a little bit of the uh, uh, extender will help it stay wet, but as it's drying there, you need the solvent into your paint here to bring it up. See how the solvent is dissolving it here? So there's a difference. So as the artist, when you're 
painting like this, you can put extender down. That will do nothing. But the extender now is mixed up in here, and that will stay wet for longer. But if it's really sticky here, the extender won't help that too much. You need a little bit of water, and you can see the water immediately loosens up the whole paint because water is like paint thinner or mineral spirits to a to a uh, oil painter. So that's what we use that for. So there's a bit of the nice dark. Let's go slightly warmer. I want to keep this a little warmer right here as this comes up the side of his nose just a bit here. And I want to keep those marks kind of loose right there like that. And uh, then we'll drag. I'll get a little small in my vision here, but a little soon still. But we'll just drag some of that burnt sienna and yellow and stuff like that right in there. And pull that right across. Get that other little bit of a tone there. A little closer to what it is on him there but you can see as I start to get these tones in he's starting to come into life let's uh let's go out and get the um get the uh, eyes in here and I like to use a stick you know in the old days I mean well it's not the old days but we call it this called a mall stick something to rest my hand on here I'm gonna go to a smaller um, this is a number four this is a synthetic filbert the synthetic has a little more of a spring to it. It's going to allow me to have a little more um, control over the edge. And painting the eyes is all about the edge. I want to. I'm going to start out with kind of a mi a mid tone of blue and burnt sienna here into the eye. And so I'm not going to look at the deepest tone. I'm not going to look at the catch lights or the lightest tone. I'm going to look into the medium part of the eye area here. We'll put some up in there. We'll put some up in here. And you can sketch it around a little bit. In, in Premier Coup, we blur the edges just slightly to keep their eyes slightly blurred there. This is going to be a lot darker. We're going to carry some more blue into it, maybe a bit more violet into it, darker, cooler. But, you know, we're going to want to have some over here because we do want to see the eyes a bit more. Now Sergeant, he would just go in there and place the dark in and, and do that. And he's the master and he can do that. But I feel like I have to have a little warmth. And you can do whatever you want to do. I feel like I have to have a little warmth uh, in that, that area as I work it. A little bit of water. I'm going to go a bit more sienna, burnt sienna. Just slightly warmer here. And I'm just going to drag that right across here, blur out the lower edge, try to pull these strokes out so that his socket here isn't well defined. And we have the rounding top stroke here that is going to help put the upper lid and that socket in. Now, to help that quite a bit, we need that uh, light stroke um, pulling down. So I'm going to take some, I'm just going to rinse my brush for a second, take some yellow. Some of my burnt sienna, a little bit of my cool colors here to gray this just a bit, and uh, maybe a bit lighter here, up around a value seven or eight. And let's just take this for right now, just to stroke down, pull down and lift off. And you're going to pick up that dark, so I'm going to pick up some more here on the palette, streak, pull down, and then I'm going to lift off. And that's going to put that softer edge of that light on that dark. We want to capture some of these areas really precise because this is going to give the wonderful look to him when we're done. So, And we're not quite there yet, but, you know, we'll get there. And, uh, you know, normally, you know, you'd look at a painting like this about uh, two hours or so, maybe a little quicker but about two hours or so, but um, uh, I'm slowing down just a little bit as I'm explaining stuff to you and talking a lot, and I do like to do that. And because uh, you know when uh, when I was learning and stuff, I I hung on, and I'm still learning. I'm, let me not say that that way. I'm always learning. Uh, but I hang on every, and he's not looking too bad on that monitor. I hang, I hung on every word my instructor always said. And um, 
you know. So every time they took the moment to explain something, I loved it. So I'm going to step back on my brush here just a bit, and I'm just going to, you know, just brush out like this just a bit of that light. We'll uh, redefine and we'll put the hair and all that kind of stuff in, but just a, a couple values lighter. And let's grab that hair movement here this way, here like that. And if that gets too harsh in there, then put that half tone in as well to soften that out. Let's get that. Um, and I'm going to go more with the, I don't see it quite in his eye, but I want to make his lower eye here a little warmer. So I'm going to put some burnt sienna right in with that gray and fix that right up in there. So it's a little, even though his, his, most of his eye is down in shadow, you can just barely see that. And that's what I want. I want to see that in there. Now I'm going to uh, put a little burnt sienna orange here. Just a bit warmer into some of this part of his eye. You know, you don't you don't really see that in there, but I, I just love the warmth of that, especially on the light side of the face. So I want to see it. Now let's take that dark, let's get that violet. We have to play that against the violet. It always keeps some of that burnt sienna in there though too. That if you don't keep that burnt sienna in there, you'll get just like a ring around this eye. You want this eye here. We're going to do the inside. We have to put the shadow on later, but we'll do the inside ring here. It's actually kind of like the thickness of the upper part of the lid and stuff there. And work very small. And for your brush calligraphy, I find something that works with me is I get real light like this and I kind of slowly encro encroach on it and I just whisper the color and I'll pull it in some directions that I see and that starts to put on some of the detail that we want to have on that uh, on that eye. I want a little more dark right up on the top ellipse part of it right up here. And I want a little more sienna right here. We'll put those catch lights in here in a minute. The catch lights always kind of bring his eye into where it should be. Now, a little lighter, a little grayer. This is a beautiful gray tone that we made here from the blues and the burnt siennas and greens right here for the lower part of the lid pulling up and in here. So there's just a nice little gray. That could be ever so half a tone lighter, just a value or so here. Let's go up one. And we'll pull in just a bit around. Soften that into the eye there just a bit. I like the blurry, I like the blurry uh, bits of color, you know, so it's not a perfect line. Let's take some of that sienna and yellow right out here. Sienna and yellow, a little bit more sienna here. A little bit of white, that might be too great. Some of my yellows. And pull around the upper lid here again. You know, that's a little dark. See how I, I as I'm getting down now in my painting. Here's where I was. I'm just going to step off the side. As I get down in my painting here now with the smaller brush, I get a little more fussy about my tones as I'm bringing them in a little closer to what it is I want him to look like. Now, we have to bring out that nice roundness to the top part of his eye. And it's like I explained in the other retriever, for those of you in my online class that's watching this particular one, the, on the other retriever, that eye opens up, right? And uh, that's what gives them the, the wow factor here. So we want to open up that eye, the roundness of the eye. We don't want to eclipse that upper lid. See, that's eclipsing it there, and it makes him a little angry. If you made it really straight, he gets really angry. So we want to open up that roundness. Make sure you open up that roundness, because that gives the, the loving surprise to the eyes that we want to have. Let's get that dark to the lower part right down here again. Reset that. A little bit more dark. There. Right in there like that. Okay. And um, 
let's put in the lower catch light just for now. We can redo these. Just a nice soft gray right on this side of the eye. A nice soft gray. And I usually put it in a bit bigger and tap it down with some color. Let's just drop that in. And then the uh, main part of the catch light here, a little, little bit lighter gray. Still a gray. We don't want to go to a white. That'll make him look bug-eyed. So maybe like an 8 or a 9 gray here. And we just want to use the edge and just kind of tap that in. Don't, don't make a perfect uh, like line or circle or something like that. We don't want to have that there. We want to have a, a blurred line. Just a touch there. Like that. And uh, let's put just slightly darker. There's just a hint of a catch light there. A couple little marks over here on this side, which I just joined together. Bigger than what it should be. So I take a little bit of dark and I take that out. That's how I love to paint, is I put too much on and take out. Take it down, take it out slightly. And it allows me to uh, define the eyes and stuff a little better. So let's just work that right in there just a bit more. So as I'll get in here, I'll finite these tones, fix up and finite those tones just a bit more. And uh, we'll get that. So that's getting him closer. He doesn't have the lights on and stuff, but that's getting him closer. And that gives us to a point now in the painting that we could uh, put in some of our background. Now I love this kind of violety, softer violet look to that. There, I'm going to go back to my three-quarter inch. Do you realize I'm just using a couple of brushes? That's the other thing. You don't need a whole bunch of brushes. Let's get a, a lighter violet here. Blue and violet. I tell you, that blue is that thalo. I should have used cerulean here. Cerulean so much easier to control next to that. The violet. To tone the violet, which we want to do, this is really cool color. We could cool it, but we always want to go back to one of the base colors of our dog and add that in. That gives you a little bit of burnt sienna there. That gives you a uh, little bit of, uh, of uh, softer color to work with. Now, I'm probably going to want to have that. Let's go down just a bit. Probably going to want to have that a little lighter like it's in the photo. I do like that violet there. So let's just take a look. And I want to do calligraphy here. So I want to be very much, and I love the violet into this, uh, into this nice medium white, the warmth of the medium white that's in there. So we want to, and usually, you know, like when I put on, a lot of people always ask, you know, how do you do these strokes? And boy, that took me kind of a while to find my way of doing it that I really like. But I'm a big advocate of studying the old Dutch masters and they always put in what is called St. Andrew's Cross into their center. So if he's leaning out this way, your, your contrast strokes, and what is the idea of a contrast stroke? It's to bring out the, um, it's to bring out basically your subject here. And uh, I'll bring these right together. See, this is what I like. I'll bring these right into here like that. You know, soften that. See, just you get that loose brush work out through there. I love that kind of stuff. And so we'll want some of that uh, loose brush work and stuff there. But um, this is bring out your subject. And so you run a contrasting stroke to, uh, to contrast your subject here. And he'll have a little bit of shadow on that side there. So we'll push, we'll push that in on that side there. So... And by the time we get all the light colors, the lighter tones in, because remember, when we said we were going to do this, yeah, it's not, that looks pretty good. We're going two values down from where we want to be. Does that make sense? Two values down from where we want to be. Let's take some of this light, change it up a little bit, maybe just a touch of green or so in it. A little green, a little burnt sienna, so it's not exactly the same tone here. And I just eclipse that ear a little too much. Sometimes I'll just pull it together there and blur those together, especially if it's on a back receding edge. That looks pretty good, you know. Um, let's pull some of this down here. So 
and you're like this. And remember, it's only paint. Just get, don't get wild, wild, but just let it go. Have some fun with it. Let's gray it down a bit more and get a little bit cooler, grayer, darker, just a bit. You let his tone and the uh, tone of the, the contrasting stroke here kind of start to come together just a bit more. And um, so let's get a bit more sienna and blue into that. Love that cerulean. Got to remember to grab that. It's a better tone. And let's just grab some of that. You bring those together right there. Like that. You can use your paper towel and take off like that. That looks good. There's all kinds of fun ways you can, uh, you know, bring those tones together. Um, I like just that little bit of through light coming from the photographer here. Right there. That looks good. Break that edge a bit. There we go. And uh, now, if you want to get some more softness to there, not a lot of primitive. Do you could head towards your yellows right up here. Bring a. It's almost a half tone between your your uh, um, what you're doing. You know, with the violets, the contrasting of the violets in your background there. And uh, you can leave some of that. Pull that out there a bit like that. And um, and go whatever you want. You know, you probably revisit these kinds of strokes. I usually revisit them a couple times as I'm working them. You know, working some of these here. There we go. So now, so you step back and you say, yeah, okay. And I, and I like that. And you can take a, a, even your dirty paper towel here and pull through. And, you know, you can leave some of this. You can pull through with some water, soften it a bit, do uh, get some different looks there, whatever you want here. You know, I like the, I like the brushwork. I, I want to put some more of that light and maybe some warmth right in there. It's a little cool after we uh, build some of the lights and stuff, okay? So we got to build some of the lights of it. But it's been an hour and a half. And I need a cup of coffee. So I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee, look at him for just a minute, and uh, be back. And we'll start the uh, next video of this when we're going to start some of the lights and start putting on some of the fur. Okay? So we'll go do that, and I'll be right back. <laughs> 